Before we dive on into it, I'd like to formally say that I am not a therapist, a psychiatrist, or some other third thing, as Spongebob would like to call it. So just throwing that out there before we begin. All right, let's get started. Hey, so welcome to another episode of MWC, as the kids are calling it these days. No, I'm kidding. No one even calls it much of anything. It's Mindfulness with Christ, and welcome to my podcast, my realm. (laughs) Oh, man. It's kind of funny. I'm genuinely nervous to be talking into a microphone alone in my apartment. So there's that for you. Um, Also, a quick preface before I get this show on the road. Um... If you might, you might be able to hear it in my voice, but I apparently have a little bit of something going on. Um, my nose is stuffy, I have zero energy, and I'm just, you know, coughing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to get tested for the Rona tomorrow. That's not a super positive way to start out an episode, <laughs> but I just thought I'd throw that out there. My voice isn't always this... Um, I don't know. I don't know what it sounds like, honestly. Anyways, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into this. All right, so this episode, <laughs> I can make it sound like really official. Like, um, this episode, we primarily focus on going over yearly seasonal rituals to embark on when staving off sad, otherwise known as seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> I couldn't think of what it stood for. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah. So, I just thought, you know what? We should go over, we, us, all of us listening. (laughs) We should go over, um, you know, some things you can do to kind of stave off that, you know, winter seasonal depression crap, you know? Because, like, the, the holidays are over. You know, I was kind of, this is the way, I guess, in my mind, and maybe I'm not alone in this, my mind, I built it up like, you know, um, at least in, you know, December, in November, um, there's Thanksgiving, and there's Christmas, and, you know, there's fun Christmas movies, and lights, and, you know, those things will help make those months easier, and, and now that Christmas is over and the new year's just around the corner um i guess there's that thought of oh where's my where'd my distraction go um and you know i i don't think i'm alone in that and you know i'm sure there's some people though a lot of people where it's maybe the flipped you know maybe christmas time is depressing for them and they just want to get that crap done and when that crap's done they're like all right you know i can kind of move forward um but anyways so i guess <clears throat> a little more background on me is that I am from Florida. Um, technically speaking, theoretically speaking, I was born in Canada. Okay, Canada, a little island called Newfoundland. Lived in New York till I was four, <coughs> and my parents moved down to Florida when I was four. So I'm a Floridian. Okay, or as my boss likes to call it, I'm a Floridian. <laughs> so. Um, my point is, I am used to heat, I am used to sunshine, for those who are unaware, Florida is known as the sunshine state, I'm used to the sunshine and the beach, I mean, I'm not used to seasons, um, you know, and, which is fine, I mean, the, the reason I moved here to Tennessee, it's where I live now, is because I wanted to try seasons, I wanted to see leaves change, and I, the only, when you're in Florida, the only reason you know that it's fall is because they're starting to sell the plastic leaves at Publix, okay, and they got the cinnamon brooms out, that's how you know fall's just around the corner, you wouldn't guess, you could knock someone out, wake them up from their coma in, you know, the middle of October, and they'd say, what is it, July, so it's like, <laughs> you know, um, that's Florida, so my point I'm saying is, um, I moved here last October, 2019 and woof woof <laughs> winter was a doozy I was not expecting that um at all and the part of Tennessee that I live in is uh so the part of Tennessee that I live in um in the location it's just kind of set up perfectly to where 
It's very, very gloomy, very, very rainy during the winter. Um, thank God, and I mean that genuinely, like, thank you God that this winter so thus far and this fall has been great. I mean, like, wow, so much, like, more sunny than last year, you know, because last year it was, like, from October to March, uh, October to March. <coughs> it was... um gloomy raining a lot fog constantly i remember at one point like i saw a little bit of blue in the sky and i had forgotten the sky was blue okay i remember um um, i remember waking up one morning and looking outside my window and feeling trapped like literally feeling trapped um i don't know how to explain it exactly but it felt like this is like inescapable thing. There was no sun. It was dreary. Um, it was rain and cold and, you know, anyways. So, and just a little cherry on top. Last year, um, around January is when I had my <clears throat> first panic attack, anxiety attack in five years at two in the morning alone in a different state. <laughs> And, um, that was the catalyst to, um, a series of highly unfortunate events that, um, that led me to make this podcast because I realized after, thank, you know, thank God that I got out of it, that I wanted to make a podcast and talk about that to people. So anyways, what is this girl rambling about? Well, I am telling you this to let you know. I guess where I'm coming from with the whole winter thing and wanting to do things differently this year. You know what I'm saying? Like I was stumbling through last year, stumbling through a new job, stumbling through a new state, stumbling through winter for the first time. And now I, I feel like I've grown a lot and I've learned a lot and I'm more prepared. And I've been reading articles and watching videos and talking to people and, and just, you know, picking things out from my general health routine, mental health routine. And I want to share that with you guys. And um, maybe, you know, this is something we can do together as the seasons go on and as winter goes on. Because it seems as though uh, January and February are like the most intense winter months. And, you know, the thing is, like, there's some people listening to this who are like, dude, I've been in winter since um, (laughs) November or October. And I guess it just depends where you live, you know, and winter in some places, even more north than where I am, might be nicer because you're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I have beautiful snow and the sunshine and it's it's cold, but it's not bitter, you know, like there's all sorts of winter depending where you live. So I have a list written down and I'm just going to go through my list. So, oh. And another thing is, I didn't prepare a ton for this episode, (sighs) but I kind of do this thing where I'm like, I get this perfectionist mindset, which causes me to not do things because I'm like, if it's not perfect, if it can't be exactly how I want it to be, then I'm not going to do it. And I don't mean it to be like that. And I've recently discovered this about myself. So a big part of me didn't even want to do this episode tonight. I was like, no, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not prepared enough. But I think, you know, in spirit of me, uh, wanting to just do things and not be hyper-focused on if they're perfect or not. I'm just going to do this episode. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just going to do this episode. <clears throat> Henceforth, <laughs> starting off with number one, routine. So, um, routine from, from, again, what I've read and learned about and watched is it's really important, you know, not even just during the winter, uh, but in general, if you're someone who has depression or even anxiety, I mean, I can kind of sense it in myself, even when I'm off routine for a while, like sometimes it's like a slow getting out of routine and then you wake up, you're like, whoa, where'd my routine go? But, um, but routine is, is really helpful. <clears throat> uh, and I think too, routine can, you know, if you hear scratching sound in the background, it's my cat in the litter box being sassy. 
anyways so routine could i think sometimes especially with youtube when you watch these videos and there's these people who are youtube famous and you know everything in their home is very minimalist and they have a fiddly fig tree that's super healthy and they have you know plants everywhere and herbal teas from india i don't know but sometimes you go and you see it's going to me you see these videos and you're just and of my morning routine my morning routine and it's like i meditate for 30 minutes and then i you know um take these specific vitamins and i take a shot of apple cider vinegar then i you know go run for 30 minutes then i do a hot yoga class and then i you know uh, paint with my dog. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. But like just these things that, you know, are cool and all, but some people have like, I don't know, jobs that they have to be at at six in the morning or they have like, you know, like not everyone has the capacity to, to do that right off the bat. So I don't let that intimidate you when you hear morning routine. I think the part of the biggest thing is starting your morning intentionally I look back at certain parts of when I was struggling with my mental health a lot and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not really starting out my morning. I'm kind of falling into it, you know, like just roll out of bed. Oh my gosh, just waking up crazy anxious, you know, just like I got to get to work. I just throw some clothes on. I just, you know, <clears throat> my hair's just throw it in a bun, which my hair's always kind of like, I like to have my hair kind of messy and crazy, but anyways, and then I roll out the door, you know, didn't pack a lunch, oops, now I'm gonna get fast food and feel gross, and it's just kind of like tumbleweeds, you know, or snowballs, but I think there's something to be said about intention, so looping back around to what I was saying about not feeling overwhelmed, or, you know, like something is too, too surmounting of a task to do, Maybe, you know, just say, okay, well, I don't have it in me to do yoga for 30 minutes and then calisthenics and uh, sit upside down in a headstand, gargling salt water, <laughs> blindfolded in a ring of fire. No. So, okay, well, I'm going to start my mornings out. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes and just sit and think. What am, you know, think about nothing, maybe just observe your thoughts, maybe think about your day and some things you'd like to accomplish, maybe say to yourself, I'm going to have a good day today, I am kicking butt, I am proud of myself for the work that I've been doing, and I cannot wait to get this day going, sometimes you gotta lie to yourself a little bit, you know what I'm saying, like, I used to lie to myself a lot intentionally <laughs> when I was going through it. Um, or maybe it's, hey, I'll set a timer f for 10 minutes and I'll read a book, you know, or my personal favorite that I don't always do like I should or <laughs> as often as I probably ought to is, um, you know, spend some time with God, you know, read your Bible, pray, you know, and sometimes it's kind of like this pressure, you know, if I'm not going to read for 30 minutes at all, if I'm not going to read for 30 minutes, I'm not going to read at all, but it's like, hey, you know, how about the compound theory and little things add up over time and I'd rather have five minutes with God in the morning every day than none let's say Monday through Friday that's 25 minutes yes I just had to count my fingers don't judge me but that's 25 minutes in a week which doesn't sound like much but you know what I think that there's something to be said about something over nothing so anyways yeah routine whether that be you know what dude I'm hopping in that hot shower I'm doing my skincare routine. I'm, you know, reading a little bit. I'm going to read some of the Bible and pray and then stretch and drink some tea while I stretch. Great. Or if it's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to, uh, you know what? Uh, go for a walk. That's right. I'm going to get my butt up and go for a walk. Or I'm going to take the time to wash my face and put on some facial lotion and floss my teeth. <laughs> Whatever it is um that you can do do it you know and then it'll, it'll grow so anyways routine i'm gonna shut up about routine and if anyone's ever interested in some of the stuff that i do my routine let me know um <coughs> uh number two is physical exercise woof that's a good one um and again i know we're all a different 
you know, phases or capacities right now for what we can and can't do. But physical exercise. <sighs> oh my gosh. I'm yawning just thinking about it. Um, so whether that be going for a run, going for a walk, doing some yoga with Adrian, which I flipping love yoga with Adrian. Um, doing some yoga with Adrian, going to the gym. I know restrictions are different everywhere and people are comfortable with different things, but going to that gym. Um, I personally box like uh, three to four. No, three times a week I box and then I do legs with this. Um, I'm training this younger 13 year old girl. I'm training her. So I do that. So that's four times a week. And then <clears throat> I like to do yoga and skate and, you know, other things of that nature. But anyways, um, but I know there's days where I'm feeling kind of blah or just down on myself or just, I don't know, unmotivated, um, caught up in my head, my thoughts, some OCD. But then I go to that gym and I box and I tell you what, almost every single time I walk out of there feeling better, more energized, more motivated, um, in a, in a, just a lighter mood. So don't underestimate it, you know. I know I'm not going to pull a bunch of stats to prove the things that I'm saying. Um, I think, honestly, I think a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, people will hear and be like, "That's yeah, I agree with that. You know, I'm not going to dispute going for a jog is better than, you know, not ever going for a jog. Okay, what's next on our list? Jesus. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean just going to God and talking to him and spending that time with him and his word and be, learning to be flexible with it too, you know? I mean, I, I, I personally talk to God throughout the day um, in certain seasons and times more than others, but just talking to him, like, you know, because he's, he's our friend, he's our father, um, so that's always pretty helpful for me is just being honest and just talking to God, you know? Like, hey, this is how I feel this is what's bothering me and um just drawing near to him and also just the community that's surrounding Christ so spending you know going to going to church going to that virtual church going to that virtual bible study you know what I'm saying like getting that time in with people the body of Christ and leaning on one another because that at the end of the day is a big part of what this is all about or what the church is supposed to be for, to uh, to reach out to other people who um, don't know God, but also to build each other up and to encourage one another in Christ. So that's another thing on my list. So routine, physical exercise, and um, drawing near to God. Okay. Another thing that could be helpful that I'm so freaking excited about it's a light box. I have an episode coming up with Emma McAdams, and she is just seriously, it was such a joy talking to her. She just seems so sweet and so humble and genuine. That episode, just keep an eye out, because when you see the Emma McAdams episode, you want to jump on that thing like white on rice, okay, because it's good. Um, I really liked our conversation, but one of the things that she talked to me about was a light box, and it was actually um, something I had already been really interested in and uh, I'll put a link below to the light box that she <clears throat> that she personally uses and I'll also put a link below to her video explaining light boxes because I know I'm gonna get something twisted if I try to um, explain it so <laughs> I won't get too into the details with that but I will say that um, you will use your light box for 10 to 20 minutes you want your light box. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Some of you are probably thinking, what the heck is a light box? Let me back it up. Um, a light box <laughs> is basically just uh, light therapy for seasonal depression or just in general, regular depression. It can be used whenever. But basically, it's a specific kind of light that has lux. Um, and oh, crap, man. This is why I wanted to use her video to explain this because... I didn't do so great in science. Hold on. What is Lux? We're going to Google this right now. What is light Lux? Light. Oh, wait, no. 
Lux is a unit used to measure the intensity of light hitting a surface, typically a wall or floor in a lighting design. One lux is equivalent to one lumen or per square meter. They differ from lumens, which measure the brightness of a light of a light chart. Okay, so um, lux. So that's lux, all right? <laughs> so basically lux is the measurement of light um, intensity, and you want to have a lux of 10,000 or more. And I say this specifically because I feel like there's a lot of products out there that say, oh, this is a light therapy unit, when in reality, it's actually not going to do anything for you and you're just kind of wasting your money and your time sitting in front of a light or underneath a light that's not, you know, biologically going to do something for you, for your mental health. So I just want to point that out. Um, but yeah, you just get that, that lux of 10,000 or more and you sit under that bad boy for 20 to 10 minutes a day so you can just you can just sit under a light while you're watching tv checking emails um watching youtube listening to my podcast um and you know you're good to go so i'll put the link again to her video explaining it in better detail because she is the actual therapist and she is um (laughs) you know she did the research for this video, um, and she seems very thorough with that kind of stuff. So, anyways, that was number four on our list. You could use a light box. And I'm flipping excited. I'm going to buy my light box literally tonight. <coughs> uh, another thing on my list, number five, number cinco, number cinco is vitamins. So, just make sure you're, like, not vitamin D deficient, basically. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, you know, this is the end all cure all. Here's my snake oil. Take this stuff now and kiss all your mental health worries goodbye. No, like if if it was truly that easy, like nobody would be dealing with mental health struggles. Okay. But my point is just, you know, if you need to go to your doctor, get some blood work done. Am I vitamin D deficient? And am I, you know, do I need more magnesium? And Magnesium can actually, uh, has been shown to reduce anxiety and stress as well. I'm not a doctor. I feel like I need to say that because (laughs) I'm not a therapist or a doctor. Um, okay. So pick up winter hobbies. This is number eight. Wait, no. This is number six. So it's gloomy outside and it's rainy or there's maybe where you live, there's snow up to your knees. I don't know. And I, poof, if that is you, I'm so sorry. Um, or maybe you love it. Who knows? But, um, yeah, picking up winter hobbies, things you can do, I guess, indoor and outdoor, you know, if you want to go outside and snowboard, like do it, you know, if you want to pick up winter hiking or, or, oh, a fun one that I've been doing lately is, um, I go out and I've been filming things, aesthetic things that are outside, you know, and sometimes I try and challenge myself. Like I'll go to a tiny park and there's this small little stream and I'll try, try and kind of get a micro approach to it and get real up close to make it look more majestic and wild than it really is. Um, but or, or I'll go hiking on a trail with my friend and we'll record leaves and foliage. And that's kind of my way of saying, you know what? I'm going to embrace the beauty of winter. It's not what I'm used to, but it's beautiful nonetheless. And it's a different kind of beauty that I want to accept. And I kind of want to take it and, and not look at it from a depressing standpoint, but from kind of like a whimsical standpoint. Like, wow, I'm like in this forest and it's beautiful and it feels enchanted and there's... There's leaves and streams and rivers and and just getting getting footage, you know, and putting piecing it together. So, anyways, I've been going out and recording it and piecing together little montages. And if you go on my YouTube channel, I'll put the link below. But if you go on my YouTube channel in the background of my episodes, you you know you can see my montages of some of the stuff that I film. It's just for fun. It's just it's basically just something to get me outside and get me doing something, you know. Um, so you can do something like that. Or, like I said, snowboarding, cross-country skiing, things that I've never really done before, but they sound cool, and if I had snow around me, maybe I would do it. I don't know. The thought of falling off the side of a mountain freaks me out just a little, okay? But but there's also, for those of you who are like, I don't want to go outside. (laughs) It's too cold, and I hate the cold, and whatever. First of all, before I get into the second half of my winter hobby ideas, I would implore you, though, just to still get outside. 
I watched one video on YouTube. I've watched so many camera remember which said this, but a girl had mentioned, um, you know, even if you don't want to go outside because it's cold, you should really just, it's just good for you just to go for a walk even. Uh, get some sunshine if there's any sunshine out where you live. Uh, get some fresh air. So I would encourage you, even if you're not the outdoorsy type, just to just to go out and do that, you know. Um, but anyways, indoor hobbies, you know, you can pick up crocheting, you can knit a scarf for yourself, um, and don't laugh, because I like to crochet sometimes, <laughs> um, you can learn a new instrument, or maybe get into poetry, or do a virtual book club with a friend. I like to make music, so I'm gonna, like, really try and buckle down these next two months and get my album finished. I made a little recording booth in my closet so just just things like that you know um or drawing painting maybe you say I don't like to play instruments I'm not artistic and I hate the cold what the heck is there for me to do maybe you could get into cooking go on to Pinterest find some new recipes some healthy whole food recipes that make you feel good and satisfied after you eat them and well nourished um Maybe you could try making candles. Don't tell me it's artistic because it is, but it's also really not something you have to be artistically inclined to do, I think. No hate on people who make candles. I'm not saying it's not, (laughs) it's not work, but I don't know. Okay, look, there's a lot of stuff you can do. I'm going to Google it right now. I'm going to Google things you can do indoors during the winter. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see what this list says. Plan your summer vacation. What a better time to get excited for summer on a winter's day make an awesome breakfast make candy that's a fun one see take an online class or tutorial good redecorate that's a good one i've been doing some deep cleaning lately and the power of deep cleaning is no joke <laughs> there's some something so satisfying about getting some cleaning done fireside camp out nap i don't know how i feel about the nap one take a luxurious bath indoor fort i can get on board with that afternoon tea video game marathon that sounds fun but i don't i don't know if i could lead down a rabbit hole so maybe be cautious with that one popcorn movie day scrapbooking okay so you know a quick google search can pop up a bunch of indoor hobbies that one can embark on number seven put in extra effort to connect this is something i try and be very good about and I'm sure a lot of you listening uh, have experienced the same thing in general with COVID and the distance. That was something I, when COVID hit and the lockdown started to take place, I was like, all right, I need to be on my cell phone game here in terms of calling my mom, my dad, friends, family members, reaching out to people, checking in on them. Um, so, you know, just put that extra effort into communicate with your loved ones and people in your life or and mix it up you know uh video chats phone calls texts or write a letter i it's really (coughs) it's really fun writing letters and it's also really fun receiving them too so you know there's lots of ways that you can connect with the people in your life or again like i mentioned earlier go to um, virtual bible studies virtual church or if you live somewhere where you can go in person then socially distance and go to your church and or not i mean america do what you want but um but yeah so there's there's ways to reconnect which leads me to my next point number eight be open that's something that has really helped me with my my journey with mental health is uh, just being open with how I feel. I know it can be so easy when someone asks how you are to dismiss that as a genuine question of how are you. And I know sometimes, I'm not going to lie, it's, it is, it, it's not a genuine question of how are you. It's just like a, you know, a nicety that we we use in our culture, but, you know, Sometimes this one says, hey, how are you? And you're not that great. Just, and of course, use discretion in in deciding, you know, is this person someone who I can actually say this to? Or are they going to, like, be the kind of person who's, you know, very dismissive or uh, odd about that? You you always have to be careful when, when, you know, in who you say things to. But just be like, 
be honest and say, you know what? Honestly, I've been really in my head the last few days and I haven't been all that great. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> it's so freeing. It's so freeing. Sometimes just knowing that you've said it and it's out there takes away a lot of the power. So that's always something you can do is just be open and honest with people, you know? Um, say, hey, you know, I've been really down the last few days and I'm just not myself. And I think I really need to talk to somebody or just hang out with a friend or go for a jog with someone, you know, and reach out to people like, hey, man, do you want to go to the gym? Like, I really could use some quality time right now. Or, hey, do you have time for a video chat? To be honest, you know, I've been feeling kind of lonely. And you know what? I think a lot of times people will respect that authenticity, especially if it's people who are in your life who love and care about you, you know? And if you ever get someone who's like, you know, weirded out by that or disapproving or dismissive, I mean, it's, it, it can, you know, it differs depending upon the situation, but I'd be cautious of that. Number nine, <laughs> take a trip. I've come to find out that a lot of people in Tennessee go on a trip in January or February to kind of escape the doom and gloom. So that's always something you can do. And some people are like, what do you mean take a trip? I can barely afford to go to the gas station down the street. Okay, touche. But if this is something in your capacity to do so, even if it's just like, hey, I know if I drive six hours south, I'll be somewhere with a lot more sunshine and warmer weather, and I can afford a few nights for $20 camping, or hey, there's an Airbnb, Airbnb. for uh 30 bucks a night you know there's there's ways to finagle and be frugal with it if again if that's in your capacity again there's the train going by if you can hear that i sh- yep okay <coughs> i had shut my bedroom door to try and block it out but also um i'm gonna do my best to edit out me sniffling and clearing my throat and coughing and stuff but only to an extent, because I'm making you have to deal with this with me. <laughs> All right, so number nine was going to trip. I might try to go back down to Florida in January or February and just uh, go to the beach house somewhere. I don't, have, I don't have a beach house. Let me rephrase that. Go to an Airbnb <laughs> and, get, and get some sunshine and see the ocean, because I really miss the ocean. Um... All right, I am slowly but surely getting much more tired (laughs) because, like I said, I'm not feeling all that great today, and it's only 8 o'clock, but, like, I think I'm, I'm ready to lay down. So, these are not in the same order that I've spoke about them, but we have routine. So, we want to have a good routine. You want to make sure that you are spending time with Jesus and in the word you want to get physical exercise in whether that be an easy 10 minute yoga session in the morning or a jog or crossfit whatever (laughs) floats your boat Uh, investing in a light box could be really helpful I'll have links below for more information on that make sure you're up on your vitamins and not low on vitamin D pick up winter hobbies Outdoor or indoor, just kind of figure out what, what, you know, works for you. Put in that extra effort to talk to those around you in your life and reach out to them. Be open and honest with how you're feeling and take a trip. Take a trip in the winter. It kind of like recharges you, you know, like breaks up that monotony. And my final tip, number 10, is something that I have to remind myself quite often and that is just to remember that at the end of the day with your struggles and your worries you know just know that it's not all on your shoulders this isn't a weight that you have to bear alone and if you're anything like me sometimes you get caught up in the the mindset of I have to fix this I have to dig myself out of this I I I me 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 you know and um I sometimes I forget that I can only do so much 
I'm human. I'm flawed. I am, uh, I'm not crying. I'm, <laughs> my nose is running. <laughs> but, um, but I have right here in front of me, Psalms 55, 22, New King James Version. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And, um, and again, I, I think of that verse a lot and I'll tell God throughout the day or throughout the week, you know, God, I, I cast this burden into you. I cast my anxiety into you. Forgive me for thinking that I am the only one who can fix me and that this is all me because God, you are the one who pulled me out of the darkness. You are the one who brought me out of this situation. So just remember that this is not a path you have to walk alone. You can reach out to people in your life. You can find community. Even now, uh, in this time we live in, you can find community. And um, and above all else, you know, God is walking this path with you. And don't ever feel like this is something that you have to do on your own. Or it's all up to you to save yourself because... You know, God cares for you and he, he's there walking with you even when you don't feel like he's there. Okay, I'm not going to act like I've always felt like God was right there next to me holding my hand, walking with me, but looking back and especially in the times I truly needed it, you know, he was he was always there and, you know, we can't go by what we feel because what we feel is deceptive, feelings are deceptive, you know. But I sent this scripture to my friend the other day. I really like it. It just kind of sounds like, it's like poetry to me, you know. But it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah forty three nineteen. So just, you know, a few scriptures that, <coughs> oof. <laughs> think about wait i have one more don't go just yet don't click off <laughs> for i the lord your god will hold your right hand saying to you fear not i will help you that's isaiah forty-one thirteen, and matthew six twenty-five. therefore i say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Whew, I can keep going. There's some good ones here. But I think what I want to do is kind of end my episodes when it's just me monologuing um, in prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. And I wanted to give a heads up because some people don't feel comfortable with that. And I respect that. So if you feel awkwardness surging through your body, click off. <laughs> For all that is good, click off. No, I'm kidding. Don't. I hope you stay. <laughs> no, seriously, click off if you need to. Ah! <laughs> okay, I'm going to pray now and just stop babbling. Um, God, right now I pray for whoever is listening to this episode. I thank you that they're not alone. And, Lord, you see their worries, you see their fears, you see their stresses. And, God, if this person clicked on to this episode because they're worried about winter and they're worried about maybe slipping into something that they feel like has been developing or maybe falling back into a yearly pattern, God, I just thank you that you're strengthening them. And I'm so grateful that they took the time to click this episode and listen. And, Lord, I just lose your peace over them and your guidance i pray that you help them to implement a lot of things that we talked about today and that you give them the strength to move forward and that this winter in the name of jesus will not be like previous winters i think that they are strong i think that they are growing and developing more and more into the person that they want to be because they can do that lord I think that through your strength and your guidance, we can all do this and grow and be better versions of ourselves and have grace with ourselves when we don't reach our goals as quickly as we'd like to. And I just thank you, God, for your presence 
and your blessing and for giving me this opportunity to talk to somebody. And I pray, Lord, that this will have an impact on someone listening, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that, <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, end the episode. And if you want, you can follow me on YouTube and um, or whatever platform you're listening to this on right now. It'd be great if you could follow, subscribe, share this with someone who you think might need it. And just remember, you know, the thought of winter can be daunting. It can It can really put serious anxiety or worry into you. But I just want you to know that... You can overcome it. And I wouldn't just say that. Like, you really can. Talk to a therapist. Talk to a friend. Reach out. You know, uh, be involved with new hobbies and and move, move your body. You know, all these things. You can do this. I believe in you. You got this. You are a strong, independent human being. Gosh darn it. And I look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Bye.